What up, beautiful people? It's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light family. Today we're talking about the authority in the name of Jesus. We're going to get deep in God's word. I use a daily devotional called Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. And today we're going to look at this devotional. We're talking about authority in this name. How do we use this name? What does this mean? Let's get into the word. So our theme scripture, I'm reading from Rhapsody of Reality. I'm going to put the link in the description. You can download your free copy. So our theme scripture, Pastor Chris uh, talks about Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. This is a famous scripture. Everybody knows about the authority. I want to read this to you. And then we can, we can dissect this, you know. It says, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him. He's talking about Jesus. And given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and of things in the earth and the things under the earth. There is power in the name of Jesus. And in this Bible study, I want, we, we're going to look into the authority vested in his name. Because I think several videos ago I did talked about using the name of Jesus. But this is just a continuation of that devotional from Rhapsody. Where we're going deep. Because if we don't understand the authority behind that name. We might not have the confidence to use that name, you know, but the name of Jesus is the supreme name. Oh, yeah, that was the title of that video. The supreme name of Jesus. Go watch that probably link to it at the end of this. But so, yeah, today we're talking about the authority, though. We are talking about the authority vested in this name. So, Pastor, let me read the first paragraph and then we can get into this. Pastor Chris says, the scripture that I just read to you is ab above is definitely about the authority of Jesus. This is different from the character or the identity of his name, right? For example, Jesus passed by many sick people who didn't take advantage of his identity to receive healing when he walked the earth. In fact, the Bible says he came to a place where there are many impotent folks. He healed one person and went away from there. That's in, uh, in the book of John chapter 5, verse 1 to 15. It talks about when he went to this place. In the pool of Bethesda, where the, the angels started at the pool, and there was this impotent man. There were so many sick people, but he healed only one person. Yet he had, yet he had his identity and his character. So in using his name, is about his authority. This is not necessarily about the person Jesus coming in, and it's about who the authority that's been vested in that name. In fact, the person that he healed didn't even know anything about Jesus. They didn't even know who he was. It was later he found out, oh yeah, this was his name is Jesus. But yeah, so we're talking about the name with authority. What authority, what authority backs the name of Jesus? I think that's the key thing. And when we understand that, we'll have the confidence to use his name. We won't be thinking, oh yeah, I'm using the name of Jesus. Uh, nothing's going to happen. No, 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 no. There's so much power behind that name. And there's been a lot of, um, I've done a lot of videos uh, about the the divinity of Christ. I think understanding the divinity of Jesus is the most important thing. You know, a lot of people call Jesus Lord, Lord. I feel Lord seems to be a tame word, you know, because you can say someone's Lord and you might not know the implication of what that word means. He says, oh, Jesus is the Lord of my life. But what does that mean when you say Lord? Is it just Lord? It does not communicate the full essence of who Christ is. And using the name of Jesus is to understand the power. Be For example, if someone say, oh yeah, you have the seal of the president. Maybe you have a letter from the president. Yeah, yeah, authority from the president or of your country or, the, or, or yeah, whatever. That means whatever backs that office. Let's say you've been given a letter. Say, hey, this letter is from the president. The signature is there. Give this person whatever they require. Based on that authority. Maybe if it was like a mayor, they'll be like, no, you don't have jurisdiction in this state. For example, people that live in the U.S. maybe understand it better because they they have different states and governors and mayors and different jurisdictions and senate. So there are different offices with different authority. And there's one that can supersede that authority. And obviously you have the different state. Then you have the federal government, which can supersede all authority. But now we need to understand what is that authority just like the president can override most what the governor said or whatever, he can use executive order and override what they say because he's, his authority is the ultimate authority of the country because he's the president. So, who is Jesus though? I don't want this to be a deep topic on who Jesus is, but I just want us to get a glimpse 
when we use the name of Jesus, we're not just talking about a prophet. We're not just talking a good man of God. We're not just talking, you know, even people when they use the term the son of God, it does not really communicate who Jesus is. Because son of God means God in human flesh. That's what son of God means. So who is Christ? And I want to read to you a translation. I love this translation because it is a Jewish translation. It's a complete Jewish Bible translation. And I was having actually a conversation with one of my friends and I was talking to her about why a lot of Jewish people find it hard to believe that to believe Jesus or to accept Jesus as their Lord because they know what it means to say Jesus is Lord. Unlike anyone else to say, Oh yeah, Jesus is the Lord of my life. For a Jewish person, when you tell them to confess that Jesus is Lord, they fully understand what that means. And I'll let you know what that means. So let me read. <laughs> uh, I took some notes. Philippians. The same scripture, the theme scripture we are reading, Philippians chapter 2, and verse number, let's start from verse number 8. This is the complete Jewish Bible translation. Oh man, maybe I can't, man. Oh my goodness. Let me start from verse 5. It says, let your attitude toward one another be governed by your being in union with the Messiah, Yeshua. Though he was in the form of God, talking about Jesus, he did not regard equality with God, something to be possessed by force. On the contrary, he emptied himself in that he took on the form of a slave, becoming like human beings are. He was God, but he became, he humbled himself. That's how he means. He became human. And when he appeared as a human being, he humbled himself still more by becoming obedient even to the death, the death on the stake as a criminal. He obeyed God. He obeyed. People think, this is a side note. This is a side conversation. I'm just looking at time. People think when Jesus came to this, to die in the world, it was just automatic. Oh yeah, he would just come and die on the world. No, there was no, there would be no conflict. But but it was a wrestling of will. If you read the, the scriptures about when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, is it Gethsemane, where he was praying to the Father, he said, "Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me." It was a wrestle. It was not an automatic thing. Like Jesus just came and like did it today, and he went on the cross. No, there was a wrestle. He had a choice. Jesus could have said no. You need to understand this. It was not an automatic thing for him to go down on that cross. He had a choice. He could have pulled out and said, Lord, Father, ah, I'm not doing this. Nah, this is too much. Because the separation, what was Jesus concerned? He was not concerned about the pain. He was not concerned about the suffering. That was not it. His concern was he would be separated from the Father. That's all he, that he always was in the Father. And now he'll become a criminal. He'll become a sinner. And the Father cannot be held seen and that's why he said when he was on cross he cried my god why have you forsaken me because god forsake forsook him he became sin it was this was not fake he was it was real he became sin he took our sin it was a real thing it was not god just walked some magic and then bleep, 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 jesus happened to cleanse our sins no it was real he became a sinner for real he took the nature of sin for real. He took our sicknesses for real. And he got separated from the Father. And that's what I'm saying. It, it was not an automatic thing for him to go down that cross. No, it was a wrestling. He had a choice. He could have still said no. He could have said, Lord, I don't, I don't, Father, I don't want to be separated from you. And then it was that wrestling. That's why he was praying. And he said, you know, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. Based on what he did, being obedient, this was, God, this was God's, the Father's response. Therefore, God raised him to the highest place. That's God the Father. And gave him the name above every name. Not above some names. Above every name. If, it's, if there's anything that has a name, if there's a being that has a name, the name of Jesus is above every name. If there's a God that exists with another name, the name of Jesus is above that name. Do you see what I'm going here? He said he gave him a name that's above every name. That means if there are any gods, 
if there's anything that has a name, anything that can be named, anything that can be called, the name of Jesus is above that, that name. And he says that in the honor of the name given Yeshua, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth. Every tongue will acknowledge, this is where I'm going, listen to that. Every tongue will acknowledge that Yeshua, the Messiah, is Adonai, to the glory of God the Father. Did you see that? He says every tongue will, when you read, uh, let me just read, uh, let me go back and read Philippians 2, 9, King James. So the King James Version said that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. The complete Jewish version translated by it, it said every tongue should confess that Jesus is Adonai. Jesus is Jehovah. Powerful. This is not an ordinary man. We didn't believe a prophet. We didn't believe an angel. We didn't just believe a good man. We believed God. Jesus is God. And for you to have that understanding, to understand who you're dealing with, you're not dealing with a, with a, you know, people always have this mentality of, um, because we're human, we like to calculate things. When you tell about, you talk about the Trinity, I mean, the Holy Ghost, the Father, we, we, we always have this calculation. So the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we can't reconcile it. How can this be three? And then you're saying this God, one God. There should be one that's superior to them. There should be definitely be a father and then underneath Jesus, Jesus maybe and then below that the Holy Ghost. We have that estimation type of thing. But that's not how God is. There's, there's, there's so much mystery about godliness and who God is. But Jesus is God. <laughs> this way, I did a several videos about the divinity of Christ. But having this background information, now you have this background information. Now even the Jewish people know this. They know what it means to say Jesus is the Messiah, Jesus is Lord. They know it means you're saying Jesus is Jehovah. You're saying Jesus is Adonai. You're saying Jesus is the one that appeared to Moses in the burning bush. That's what you're saying. So this is the name that he's been, has been granted us, the name of God almighty so have that thought in mind i let i want to get let's keep on reading this uh oh my god i'm running out of time let me rush buster chris says you're not even required to squeeze up faith to use his name his name is an instrument and a gift given to you to use and the authority of his name is over all things over all beings anything that can be identified Anyone can use that name and the power in it. He says that authority encompasses everything. Beings, things, living, non-living, everything. Nature, everything is under that. Uh, his, his name is above all things. In John chapter 14, verse 12 to 14 says, Verily, verily, these are the words of Jesus. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. In greater works than this shall he do. Because I go down to my father. Whatsoever. Jesus was very extra, extravagant. In the use of his name. He says whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name. That will, he, will I do. And the father may be glorified in the, in the son. If you shall ask anything in my name. I will do it. He says my authority is in my name. He says I've given you my name. Anything you ask the Father, he will do it for you. Jesus wants us to use his name. It's a family name. It's being given to us as an instrument. This is not like, oh yeah, now I need to believe more in the name of Jesus. No, the name is an authority. It's like whether you, for example, if the president of a country gave you a letter and it can be proved, he was signed and say, whoever is bearing this letter, whatever, whatever, give him X, Y, Z. It doesn't matter if you like the president. It doesn't matter if, um, you, you probably a different political party. If that name, name it, it, you've been given authority under that president's name, it it, it it is it's irrelevant what you think about that president, because his name is an authority. He, you've been given the power of attorney. Is a power of attorney to use his name. That's what it means. So when you use the name of Jesus, you have been authorized. You are an authorized dealer to use that name. Jesus wants us to use his name about concerning everything, about our families, to change circumstances. When you're sick, use the name of Jesus. Anything that you want, change. Jesus, use my name. I want to read to you something, actually. 
I took some notes uh, in the book of John. He, he, this is kind of similar to what he was talking about before. He says, Verily, verily, I say, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He says, Anything. Just ask in my name. It's like me asking it. He says, if you ask the Father in my name, it is like Jesus himself asking that thing. And he says, he, he, this is the words of Jesus. He says, he that too, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be made full. How God, how Jesus wants us to use his name. He said, you have not asked anything in my name. He's saying, you have not used my name yet. He said, use my name and receive this is an invitation from the master himself. He said, right up to this now, he was telling the disciples, you have not used my name yet. He says, ask in my name and you will receive and you'll be full of joy. This is what the king is saying to you. Don't complain. Don't say, people always be like, pray for me, pray for me. No, if you're a Christian, you have the name of Jesus. You can use the name. He didn't say only special people that can use that name. Only pastors and ministers of God can use that name. He said, if you believe in me, you, you have been granted that the authority to use the name. Use that name. What do you want to change? Use the name of Jesus. What is wrong in your family? Use the name. What do you want? Use the name. He said, you have not used my name. He said, use my name and you'll receive. You'll be full of joy. Don't complain. Don't worry. Use the name. Use the name of Jesus. That name is the name of God. So I, I have to tell you this for you to understand how powerful that name is. Let's keep on reading this. Pastor Chris says, He gave us the power of attorney, the legal right, to act in his stead, to use his name. So don't cheat. Oh, I love what Pastor Chris says. He says, don't cheat yourself. Use his name. Use it against Satan, the forces of darkness and circumstances and they will respond to you as they will respond to Jesus. When you cast out devils, it's like Jesus himself casting out devils in the name. Jesus said, you will cast out devils in my name. Kick out devils. Heal the sick in my name. He says in Colossians, um, I'm rushing right now, I'll probably give the reference scriptures. Colossians chapter 3. Hmm. Let me read this. The Spirit of God says I should read this too. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Let's go there real quick. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, Whatsoever, whatsoever, that means anything you do in word or in deed, that's in action, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. Go to work in the name of Jesus. Start that business in that name. Leave your home in the name. Walk in that name because it is our name. We have been given authority to use that name. Put hands on your body where you got sickness in the name of Jesus. I command this sickness to go in the name of Jesus. Cast out devils from your home, from your business in the name. They will, they will listen to you because this name is superior to the devil. It's superior to demons of darkness. Trust the name of Jesus. Use it. Use it. You cannot overuse the name. <laughs> You can't say, oh, today you ran up or how many times you have used that name. You got you to gotta top up. No, no. You can use the name every time, every day, all the time. Use it concerning everything. Use it in the name of Jesus. Disallow, allow, whatever you require. It's an authority. You have that authority. Don't be in a, in a, in a victim state. Oh, yeah, please pray for me. No, you pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. You can. That's all you need. The name of Jesus. And trust Whatever you say will take place because that's what it is. I want us to take this confession. This is a powerful confession. I want us to, take, to, to pray this. Say this after me. The seal on everything that God made bears the awesome name of Jesus. I do all things and walk wonders in his name. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to use the most awesome and powerful name of Jesus to effect changes in my life and in my world. Hallelujah forevermore. Praise God forevermore. You can study what we just read. Go read Philippians chapter 2 verse 10. Come, uh, the complete Jewish Bible. Mark chapter 16 verse 17 to 18. Acts chapter 3 verse 6 to 8. And you can read the whole Bible in one year or two years. I'll put the scriptures. You know, people always want to find a, a Bible reading plan. So I'll put the scriptures 
you can start from today you know either cover the bible in a year or two years you know wow 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 put this to work practice let's practice the word i was like lord i'm gonna use the name often now oh i'm gonna use the name concerning everything you know use the name use the name of jesus what do you what do you want to stop use the name what do you want to allow use the name we have the legal right to use his name and devils will respond to that name they have to that is powerful i want to mention something special actually based on that name there's so many things going on i want to pray for you first of all before i pray for people that are not born again i want to make a quick announcement if you're watching this there's a special program i want you to get involved in this this happened i'm gonna let you know more about this information in the coming days as many of you probably know there's so many things going on around the world we're living in those last days that the bible prophesied and there's so many things uh if you've been following the news you know what happened in uh, afghanistan um there were so many christians being persecuted because how the U.S. left and, and it, it was just so much. People have been left in devastation. Christians being killed. It's real. And my church, we are coming with a project to reach out to Christians. Not only Christians, but people in Afghanistan with God's word and help. So we're launching this project where we want to take rhapsodies of reality. The, like I'm reading to you right now. Imagine someone in Afghanistan getting getting these rhapsodies in their own language. And, and knowing they can they can come out of any situation because no, no amount of humanitarian support or help can change a man's soul because these are the last days the UN cannot give you salvation the Red Cross can't change anything but there's one thing that will liberate a man's spirit and that's the gospel of Jesus Christ so I want you to join me in my church as we reach out to the world because this is what Jesus said he said go out to the whole world and preach the gospel so we are having this project where we want to uh, sponsor rhapsodies in 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 the, in the different Afghanistan languages and take him to Afghanistan and also send help to Afghanistan. So this is a project we're working on, and I want as many as you can join to be able to inv get involved in this project. Let's reach out to the whole world. You know, Jesus said we should go reach out. Let's bless our world. Let's rescue other Christians that are going through so much tough times. Let's give him hope in Christ. Let's rescue souls. The time is short. If no one tells them about the gospel, the UN is not going to preach this gospel to them. I guarantee you that. Even the Red Cross. <laughs> I'm telling you this for real. So God is using you and I to minister to them. So I want to let, I'll let you more know about this probably tomorrow's video. I'll, I'll do a more detail. I'll break down oh, what's the plan, what's the project, and how you can be involved. So let's just join forces, changing lives. Okay. Another thing. Join my newsletter. I have a newsletter where we do a Bible study every sun Saturday. And I send you a newsletter on Sundays. So be part of this. Link in the description. I'll send you a Zoom link where we can join, uh, pray together on a Bible study. 8 p.m. on Saturdays. And I send you a newsletter every Sunday. If you're watching this and you're not born again, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that you receive salvation. You know, then you can't use the name of Jesus unless you're a Christian. So if you're not born again, I want to pray for you. That you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So I want you to say this prayer after me. And mean it with all your heart. And you'll be born again. You'll be a child of God. It's as simple as that. So say this after me. Just say this. Just say, oh Lord God. I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ. Son of the living God. I believe he died for me. And God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. If you said that prayer, congratulations, you're born again. Welcome to the family. Subscribe to this uh, channel. I have so many videos that will teach you how to walk in Christ. Go watch this found, uh, playlist called Foundation School. This will explain more about the Christian walk and how you can grow as a Christian. Also, subscribe to my newsletter where I'll teach you God's word. We'll have a Bible studies on Sunday on Saturdays. And I'll send you God's word on the newsletter on Sundays. So, link in the description. So, thank you once again for watching. I'm, make sure you guys look out for that video tomorrow. We're going to be reaching out to Afghanistan. Together, you and I, we can preach this gospel to the end of the world. When Jesus said, go to the whole world and preach the gospel, I bet people didn't imagine, how is this going to happen? How are we all going to go uh, to uh, uh, Afghanistan, to Malaysia, to Singapore, to Japan, to South Africa, to Namibia, to Mozambique. How can we all go around the world? It's impossible. But Jesus knew 
It is possible when we all come together and join forces, we can reach the world. And this is what's happening in this last day. So look out about uh, look out for this video tomorrow. I'll explain in detail about this project to reach out to Afghanistan with the gospel and help sending solution and help. So make sure you uh, look out for that. And I want to pray for you. Let me pray the blessings of God will remain with you. That you use the name of Jesus to change anything in your life, circumstances in your life. And even right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command the sickness, that disease to leave your body. I rebuke the sickness. I rebuke the infirmity. Be made whole. Be made well. You devils of infirmity. You devils of sickness. Go from them. Be healed from the top of your head, the tips of your toes. Your family is well. Your family is well. Everything that concerns you is well. Divine supply. Divine provisions. In the mighty name of Jesus. The wisdom of God is made available unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I appreciate each and every one of you. Put in the comment section. I'm going to use the name of Jesus. Just put in the comment section. I'm using the name of Jesus. And every day, go out in the name. Go to work in the name of Jesus. Use your, it start a business in our name. Everything you do, be conscious. You're doing it in the name of Jesus. And it will not fail because the name of Jesus is the supreme name. Thank you once again for watching. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.